Hi, welcome to Rambling Ronnie's podcast. This is where I, Ronnie, talk about true crime, unsolved mysteries, and interject with any other random things I feel like talking about. Please look for me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram if you want to leave any comments or information you may have on whatever I am discussing. Today, I am doing a mini-sode about the Yuba County Five. This has also been referred to as the American Dyatlov Pass incident because of similar mysterious and unexplained circumstances that led to multiple deaths on a cold snowy mountain. On February 24th, 1978, five young men drove to watch a basketball game at the California State University in Chico, California. At 10 p.m., the game was finished and the five men drove to a nearby store, bought refreshments and made their way home. The five men consisted of Gary Matthias, age 25, Ted Weir, age 32, Jack Madruga, age 30, William, or Bill, Sterling, age 29, and Jackie Hewitt, age 24. All of the men had intellectual disabilities or psychiatric issues, with Gary being diagnosed with schizophrenia. The men were riding in a 1969 Mercury Montego that belonged to Jack Madruga. The five were all eager to go home, as the next day they themselves were to play a basketball game. They played on a team that represented the rehabilitation center that they spent time at. After leaving the store, they should have headed south to go home. However, for reasons that are still unknown, the men drove east for about 70 miles. When they did not make it home, concerned parents alerted the police. The police searched, and on February 28th, the Mercury was found abandoned on a mountain road. The keys were missing, and there was still gas in the car. It appeared they hit a snowbank and were stuck. It was not until June of that year that a group of motorcyclists came across an abandoned forest service trailer. They went into the trailer out of curiosity and found a body inside. It was Ted Weir. He was in a bed wrapped in sheets from head to toe. His shoes were missing, and his feet were frostbitten. It was noted when police arrived that the cabin was over 19 miles from the Mercury. Two other bodies were found. It was Bill Sterling and Jack Madruga. Madruga had the keys to his car with him. Jackie Hewitt was then found after. Gary Matthias was still missing. Only his shoes remained in the cabin, and it was presumed he took Ted's shoes. Ted, upon further inspection, was emaciated. He was about 200 pounds before, but was between 80 and 100 pounds when found. Though he was clean-shaven before, he had facial hair, which indicated he may have been alive for about 8 to 13 weeks. Yet out of all the canned food in the cabin, there were only 12 open cans of food, and there was access to a propane tank that simply had to be turned on in order to heat the trailer. Yet there were also matches, books, and wooden furniture that could have been burned, yet none of this was utilized. There was a man on February 24th who was driving on the mountain road who suffered a heart attack as he was driving. He then stopped, and as he lay in his car, unable to do anything, he claimed he saw headlights for a pickup truck. He saw a group of men, a woman, and a baby. He called for help, but they all ignored him. It is difficult to know what or who this man saw, or if he really saw anyone at all as he was very ill in the moment. Were the men tricked by strangers? Did Gary have some kind of mental break? Gary also had a friend in a town that would have been in the direction they were driving. Did they try going there, get lost, become stuck, and try to search for help? Why did they not do more to get the car out or to save themselves in the trailer? Gary has not been found, and the case remains unsolved. I hope you enjoyed this mini-sode. Please follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on the theories of this case. Thank you for tuning in, and take care.